And he's also got a good temperament in that match in the China Championship. He led White 3-1 at the interval, trailed 4-3, but still had the wherewithal to win the closing couple of frames. Forty. And Li Hang trying to follow his friend Zhao Yulong into the winners group. Zhao, then a teenager. This week he celebrated his 20th birthday, but back when he won group one, he was a teenager. And he's into the, the winners group in March. Li would love to join him there. Just a touch of running side there to give himself the angle on the black to go into the bunch. Well, a pretty good split but not a good result in terms of leaving himself an easy red. That said, if this one goes in, it might well be frame one at this visit. Oh, never anywhere else. Lee Hang looks up for this. Well, he's striking the ball very cleanly. 64. Sixty-five. <coughs> the break, sixty-five. The lead is sixty. So the black here in one more red. Well, we had 20 century breaks in Group 5 over the 80. last couple of days. And the very first frame of this group could now easily yield a century as well. Actually, in the first frame of Group 5 
on this table on Tuesday morning. Ricky Walden made 140 total clearance. There's a high break prize of £500 per group. Mark Williams won it in Group 5 with a 144. Lee Hang here could set an early target. Well, first things first, there's the century. Well done. A possible 137 available. 102 103 Oh, Lee Hang Miss Q's on the black. So no total clearance, but what a break nevertheless. Michael White and Mr. Reddy should have potted using the rest. And Lee Hang did the rest. A break of 103 off the mark. Flying. Lee Hang won. Michael White, nil. As usual, of course, two matches being played simultaneously. Just behind that black curtain, you'll find table two. And on there right now, it's Graham Dopp, the 2006 world champion, up against Martin Gould, who was fifth in Group 5, and therefore, uh, to stay of execution, continued on to this, Group 6. There in the first frame, nothing much happening yet. As always, we'll keep you informed as to what occurs over on table two. Now, though, we're wondering whether Michael White can reply to that tremendous start by Second. his Chinese opponent. Michael White to break. That's one thing I noticed when he got to the semi-final of the China Championship. I was fortunate enough to be commentating on that event for Eurosport and saw a lot of the snooker there. When he was in amongst the balls, Lee Hang, he was very solid, very dependable, good safety player. And as I said in the first frame, he has the ability, it seems to me, to concentrate really well. Not the most devastating potter from distance, mind you. Let's see if he can knock this one in. Now that was a short range pot, but jacking up the cue, hitting down on the white, that's an indication of just how well he's queuing. The black went into the heart of the pocket, that wasn't an easy shot.
it's been a, a really good season for the lower ranked little known Chinese players or lesser known certainly many of them have got to the latter stages of at least one tournament with Li Hang being a, a prime example who's done really well in two of them of course just before Christmas Kao Yu Peng almost was a very surprising winner of the Scottish Open led Neil Robertson 8-4 in the final before crumbling to a 9-8 defeat 16 so while the likes of Ding Wei and Liang Wenbo have been relatively quiet by their standards, the slack has been picked up by the lesser lights. Well, he's unfortunate there, Li Hang. 21 does have a pot on a red using the rest if the red at the top of the the line of three is looking at does pot the problem there is severely hampered by the other red the queuing that is Well, he cued that one really well. You can't get any closer without not potting it. Well, how about that? Michael White couldn't get through in the end to the red over the pocket. Lee Hang for. But Lee Hang can. Always difficult when a ball is so close to a pocket to try and judge what the cue ball is going to do. That's okay though for Lee Hang. He's on the brown. The white travelled just about far enough. But it's not travelled far enough there. Now, Lee here could pot the red to the distant ball pocket, the green pocket, and stun across for the black into the opposite top pocket. But he doesn't want to leave the red on that he was just looking at. Well, he didn't play the shot to nothing. He played wholeheartedly to pot the red, and he has left the red he was worried about. One. Well, it's not exactly been a glorious start by Michael White, has it? A fluke, then a, a missed red with the rest he should have potted. Then trying to squeeze through for a red, he caught the brown initially. So needs to make his presence felt. Let me quickly tell you that on table number two, the first frame has fallen to a former world champion. Graham Dot leads Martin Gould 1-0.
Seventeen. No, White's not with it yet. If you believe in the power of positive thinking, it might be a good idea for White to recall when he played Lee Hang at the Indian Open in 2015. It was in the last 16, White played very well. Breaks of 62, 77, 94 and 109 to win 4-2. And of course that was the event he went on to capture the title. Whitewashing Ricky Walden is also in this group, 5-0 in the final. So that Indian Open success, together with his win in the shootout around, around the same time, they're the, the career highlights so far for White in terms of silverware. Not to forget, of course, his victory earlier this season in the Paul Hunter Classic. White did really well there with the cue ball and red so close together it was hard to play that shot and get any kind of meaningful run through on the white. There was always the risk of a double hit, in fact. Oh, but Michael, a second Michael black in the frame goes astray. And Lee comes to the table with a, a glorious chance, already 12 points to the good. And the point I was trying to make earlier is that this is the kind of position in which he thrives. He's got good cue ball control at short range. Knows his way around the pink and the black spot.
And because of those steely powers of concentration, he's usually dependable in this kind of situation to make a big number. <coughs> well, just flicking one red into the other, not what Lee Hang wanted to do, but the red on the the bottom of the three goes. <coughs> 41 ahead, just the most simple black is frame ball. Well, what a delightful positional cannon that was. He deserved better. He's not on the red. So maybe White will be tempted to come back, but he needs a couple of snookers. As you can see, Lee Hang is in a self-imposed snooker here, and he doesn't want to lean over the table too far, get his alignment well off whack, and fail to escape. Thanks. Lee Hang, 36. Well, yesterday, in the semi-finals, in the second frame, Jet Trump got both snookers he needed against Ricky Walden. He didn't win the frame in the end. He One. potted the pink and was forced to take the cue ball in and out of balk and unluckily ran it off. I was about to say if White can pot the black here and get the snooker in behind the pink off the red, but leaving the cue ball under the cushion there does him no favours in that regard. No attempted pot from White with the wall of balls down the spine of the table, the the blue, the pink and the black. There was always a big target for White to hide behind there. And this is no bargain when it comes to an escape. Play that slowly because he didn't want to miss the red go past it and maybe into balk and leave a free ball. Thank you. And as it so often does, the white catching the bump of the middle pocket could prove expensive.
That's that. Yep. White concedes, Lee. and so Lee Hang, thanks to some excellent snooker in the first frame and helped by a few mistakes from White in the second, it's Lee Hang who takes a 2-0 lead. And it's also looking as though Graham Dott is going to take a 2-0 lead as well over Martin Gould. As it stands, he's 63 in front in the second frame with four reds left. So the advantage 63, 59 on the table. Gould needs a snooker. Michael White sitting there looking a little downcast and with every justification. It was a ball he missed, he should have potted in the first frame that allowed Lee to make his century. He missed a couple of blacks in that frame as well, did White. Not the start he would have desired. Third frame. Lee Hankton. Missing the red was bad enough, but the double kiss was even worse. Had he avoided that red, the cue ball would have been, well, pretty much out of harm's way. You get the feeling with Lee Hang, the way he plays, the way he clearly is very determined, the way he cues as well, which is technically excellent. You get the feeling he practices an awful lot. Looks a, a dedicated sort. And if that is the case, which I'm sure it is, He's got my admiration. Seven. Eight. I just dug into the cue ball slightly too much there, hence he's left himself a tricky black to say the least. And when you're playing this with below centre striking on the white, so easy to undercut the black. Which is precisely what he's done. Okay, hang. Eight. Can confirm, by the way, there was no Houdini act from Martin Gould in the second frame. Graham Dot has won it, and so he's 2 0 ahead.
Well, I think that just about sums up Michael White's morning so far. Into the bunch. Eight. And if he does have a red on, A, position is going to be difficult, and B, the pot itself. Nothing coming easy. He made a century on a full-size table, Michael White, when he was nine years old. In this match, 30s are proving tough, but that's the way of the game. He could come back in his next outing, which is against Graham Dot, by the way, on this table at two o'clock this afternoon, and play brilliantly. Wow. Oh, what a shame for Lee Hang. Lovely pot on the red. He knew he was going to kiss the black, but he didn't anticipate kissing it into the pocket. And you know, on shots like that, do frames and matches turn? He's always been a street player, Michael White. When he gets a little bit of inspiration, he can do anything. Six. Quite simply, too many balls are being missed. We analyse snooker a lot. We talk about safety percentages. Potting with the rest. All that kind of stuff. Ultimately, it's about potting balls. And if you miss a lot in professional snooker, I'm afraid, it's a recipe for defeat. Mind you, Lee Hang there thought he was going to kiss those reds and in so doing hold the white. No contact made. That's why the cue ball's under the cushion. Another pressure shot. This time he does contact a red which holds the white in the middle of the table. Eight. Good pot that. He'll view this as the chance to complete a 3-0 whitewash. going back on its spot is rather a hindrance that's why he had to be so careful
50. Does the red closest to the white go through the gap? It does, you know. Not initially, had he not been pretty convinced. Twenty-three. Flies in. I think to this point in his career it would be fair to say that Li Hang has been one of the foot, foot soldiers of the Chinese snooker revolution but what a formidable foe nevertheless And then comes a really unexpected miss. The break ends at 37. His lead, 23. And it should have been substantially more. One. Well, it's a fluke, but not one of those flukes that... You go ooh and ah and think how lucky the player has been. Yes, he's going to snooker from it, or at least he should have done. But because he's overhit that little nestler behind the green, Lee can see a red, and basically White's gain from the, the fluke is a single point. That's all. So two competing agendas now from these two players. Being 22 ahead, Lee doesn't mind seeing a few balls on cushions. White, being 22 behind, wants to see the table as open as possible. White would prefer the red closest to the white to go past the blue to give him a slightly easier starter than this. One. The red close to the left-hand side cushion and also to a certain extent the brown right now are Li Hang's best friends.
Eight. Michael White, eight. Wanted the cue ball to travel maybe an inch or two more. That was a really good chance to lay what would have been a troublesome snooker. Well, how about that? One. Not only did Lee Hang not get the snooker, he left the red on. And White could also solve another problem here by potting the brown, but the angle clearly is not correct. Even so, a chance to clear. Four. So White arrives at the colours facing a four point deficit. He needs yellow to pink. The cannon judged perfectly. I think this is going to be a frame that Lee Hang has thrown away. Remember the short range ready missed when he was seemingly in total command. 19. You're not going to believe it. He's left the blue short. He has left the blue short. He couldn't make up his mind how to get on the pink. You could see the thought process. OK, I'll just dribble it in. Got down, hit it. Not enough thought, not enough care. That really was careless. I don't like that word in snooker, but that was careless. Extraordinary. Five. 50 points each. Lee Hang needs pink and black. Normally when a player leaves a ball short, it's just an inch or a centimetre short. That was way, way short of the target. And as a consequence, it's Lee Hang who completes a 3-0 whitewash. Well, I'll tell you what, he doesn't need me to tell him. Michael White needs to make a radical improvement on that performance to stand any chance of making the playoffs in this group. OK, it's only one match in the books, but he missed an awful lot and made an awful...